This is the Gig Fun soldering practice board, DIY kit number EK1874. Let's see what comes inside the anti-static pouch. First thing we see is the company brochure, the instructions, and a bag of goodies. Let's take a moment to unfold this piece of paper real quick. There is a schematic on one side and basic instructions on the other. Inside the goodie bag, we have a battery holder that holds four double A's, a USB power cable, the board, which has placement markings for some of the components, another small bag with some LEDs, chips, and other stuff. And we also have some unlabeled resistors. I'll need to figure out what the values are for each of these. There are quite a few pieces, so I figured it would be a good idea to organize all of them. There were several LEDs that were bent out of shape, so I went ahead and straightened them out. Now that everything is all organized, we are ready to get started. Also got my trusty helping hands just in case. I started out with the resistors first, but I did go out of order a little bit. I wanted to get the 10k ohm resistor out of the way since it was the only one. With the 10K resistor done, I moved on to the 1K resistors since they were marked on the board.
After I finished all the 1k resistors labeled on the board, I noticed that I had this one left over, but I wasn't supposed to have any extras. But for now, I decided to move on to the 200 ohm resistors. While working on the 200 ohms, I noticed on the instructions that R1 on the board was supposed to be filled with a 1K resistor, but it wasn't labeled. Luckily, I didn't put a 200 ohm resistor on there. Skipping ahead a little bit, here's the board with all of the resistors installed. Next up were the LEDs. LED polarity is determined with the longer leg being positive, the anode, and the negative being the shorter leg, the cathode. On the board, the positive side is depicted as the flat side of the triangle. Here we have the first half of the row completed. The instructions tell us to make this cross shape first, and since I was so bad at following instructions earlier, I figured I should, you know, go ahead and do that. I was having a lot of trouble keeping the board flat while working on the vertical line of LEDs, so I decided to do the top and bottom ends. This made it a lot more stable while soldering. Here are the first two rows completed. I continued to follow the instructions and completed the rest of the LEDs. Last one. Continuing to follow the instructions, the next part involved the power plug, a couple larger capacitors, a small capacitor, and a potentiometer. And here are all those parts added to the board. Next up are these transistors. The instructions simply called them triodes, which can be a little misleading if you aren't aware of what each of these parts are or what they do. So 
Skipping ahead a little bit, here I'm installing the last transistor, just in case anyone wanted to see how I bent the pins and soldered them on. Now it's time for the last parts. It's time to install the integrated circuits. I needed to make sure that this little indent over here matched up with the cutout over here on the board. I was having a little bit trouble getting the IC onto the board, so I took it off and bent in the pins a little bit before putting it back on. For these bigger pieces, I like to solder one pin on one corner and then solder an opposite side to just kind of keep it in place before doing anything else. The instructions have you put some pretty big pieces on compared to the ICs, so when I got to this step, it was a little hard to make the chip flat. So what I ended up doing was pressing against it, heating it up again to get it closer to the board. And here is the last part that I'll be putting on this board. I did have to bend the pins a little bit on this one as well. Once it was in, I had a really hard time keeping it in place uh, since there were so many other parts that were installed that were taller than it. I think these should have been installed earlier than what the instructions suggested as it would have been a lot easier to keep them in place.
Everything is now installed. I don't plan on using the battery holder, so I'm only going to be using this USB cord to power it. Since I'm not going to be using the battery holder, I'm just not even going to bother uh, adding it on. Might end up using that for a different project down the road. One last thing. It's time to clean off any flux that might have come from the solder. I'm going to be using some isopropyl alcohol for this. At first, I was only cleaning around the parts where I soldered, but I quickly noticed that the whole board was getting sticky. There might have been some layer of flux or something on the board pre-installed uh, before I got it. So I just cleaned off everything a few times. After letting the board dry for a bit, it was time to plug it in and see how I did. Adjusting the pot causes the light pattern to speed up or slow down. I'm not sure if I was messing with it too much or I have something loose or if it's supposed to turn off, but it did turn off on its own for a bit. So I decided to turn it off and turn it back on. Overall, I think this is a nice little kit. It's a good board to practice on for me, and it was a good way to test out the new soldering station I got. Hope this was helpful to someone who might have got the same kit or is thinking about getting one. Have a nice day.